I'm going to show you how to take some very neutral colors, add a pop of gold, and create an amazing gold marble. Stay to the end and you'll be surprised. All right, so we're going to start with a uh, sample board that is painted with our white undercoating. And what I've done is I've mixed up three ounces per square foot of our art coat epoxy from Stone Coat Countertop. And I have put them in my cups so that I can start adding colorants. Then I left a little bit in my bucket, turned it upside down, letting all that material come out. And we're going to use that material to do a skim coat. But first, while this all falls down, let's go mix some colors. These are the colors that we're going to be using. Titanium White by Just Resin. Absolutely love it. It is a very uh, heavily pigmented color. Then we're coming in with Color Passion Beach Sand Luster. Kind of a creamy off-white. Then we're coming in with Color Passion Beige Luster. Really pretty, great, neutral color. And then we'll be doing some accents with uh, Pale Gold from Just Resin. And this gold, I really like it. It's not a bright, vivid gold. It's, it's really a great gold if you just want to add a little bit of that color. All right, so we're going to come in pretty heavy with our white titanium. So we're going to tint our first cup very opaque. Now, if you don't have titanium white, you can substitute with our Alumalite white dye. Both of those are very good uh, in our epoxy and work really well. I do like the titanium white a little bit more. It gives a little bit more uh, design when we start spritzing with our alcohol. And I just like to work with that. All right, so that's our whole milk right here. Now we're going to make our skim milk. All right, did you see how I just dumped that? just what was on the stick into the cup. And that's how we're mixing our skim milk, which is basically white translucent, meaning we can see through to our stick. We can see the grain when we lift it up, as opposed to this, where now we can't, so it's very opaque. Having two like that really does help with building depth. Now we're going to come in with our Beach Sand Luster, which is the off, kind of the off-white, creamy color. That, I'm not doing really heavy. It's, I wouldn't call it a full opaque, but it's a little more than transparent. And then the last one we're going to come in with is our Beige Luster, and this is by Color Passion. These Color Passion and just resin paste mix so good. And resin, you don't have to worry about getting your little, um, I guess, starburst like you do with mica powders. Now, I still use mica powders quite a bit. It gives a different look. But I absolutely love these paste. All right, so again, I didn't overload. I wouldn't call that a full opaque, but it's a little more than a transparent. Now for our gold. So for the gold, and this is a very highly pigmented, and you could see this much, I'm using this much gold, all right? Now this is not a gold that's gonna necessarily float on top, and that's why I chose this gold. This gold will actually fall down and mix into the um, resin once we start doing our design element. A lot of the golds, will actually stay on the top and float. And I love those golds, and there's a time to use those golds. I'm just not gonna use it in this piece. Let's take this and start putting it on the board. So we've let all of the product come out of our bucket. I do like to kind of scrape my bucket a little bit. And as long as you mix your product very well, it's okay to scrape your edges. So what we do when we mix is we'll mix for three minutes. We'll take a stick. We'll scrape our sides. 
and then we'll hand mix to make sure that everything in the bucket is thoroughly mixed. That way, when we do scrape our bucket and put it on our surface, we're not gonna get a sticky spot. We'll come in, torch this just a little bit to warm it up. And now I'm gonna do a very, very light skim coat, which all that's gonna do is help our next layer of epoxy to flow really, really nicely. And this, guys, does not have to be anything perfect. I'm just wanna get it on the surface to help everything move. And it does not take much at all. You just pull it really tight with that Bondo spreader and you're good to go. And you can take your hand, you can rub those edges, kinda help that epoxy to move over your edge. All right, here we go. Let's get those colors out of the cup and onto the board. Let me see. I think I'm going to start with my white opaque. Very random. Put that color down. Save just a little bit in my cup. I like to do that. All right, now I'm going to come in with, I think I'm going to come in with my beach sand luster next. And again, everything is random. I'm just starting to kind of fill in some voids. Make sure everything gets out. Now I'm coming in with my beige luster. Now this is something you guys may want to adjust. If you don't want a dark finish, a darker, and that's kind of what I'm going for, a little bit darker, you can adjust how much or what your ratios are on these colors. If you want it to be a lighter color, stay away from the um, beige, but I really like that. All right, here we go. Now we come in with our translucent white, and this is just gonna help build depth. And I'm just kind of putting that in all of the voids. I'm gonna heat it up just a bit. All right, and let's start melding. So what I want you to do is the way I want you to hold your Bondo spreader is with two fingers. Don't grab a hold really tight because then you're gonna be moving too much product across the surface. So very light, let the weight of the Bondo spreader be really kinda all that's on the table. I'm not putting a lot of pressure. These colors together are absolutely stunning, guys. It, it's, they meld so well together. Gives a very neutral color palette. Now, if you, wanted to lend maybe a little more to the gray instead of to the cream, instead of using the beige about the doing the gray, because I don't know the name of it. All right, so we've got everything melded really softly. Now, if you'll notice, I'm not over melding this. I'm just moving the product enough to cover my board. If you over meld, you're gonna take away from the real marbly look that we're trying to achieve. So just enough to kind of cover your board, get all of your voids covered, and you'll be good to go. Now, one thing I absolutely love about having your different opacities with the skim milk and the whole milk is that the, the skim milk or the translucent white you can actually see down to the substrate, which is so pretty, gives a real 3D effect. Torch very lightly. All right, now I'm gonna come back, fill in any little voids I may have, any little surface tension by just tapping. I'm also gonna make sure that that epoxy is rolling over my edges. And what I'll actually do is now that the, cut, the color has kind of run down in my cup, I like to come around to the front and make sure that I have color on my edges. Just kind of drip that out so that those colors run down and I have something for my eye to go to. Make sure that you've got full coverage. Use your hands, push that epoxy down and up under the uh, countertop. All right, guys, this is absolutely gorgeous. You could walk away right now. This could be a finish all on its own. Literally, it is absolutely gorgeous. I love it. Let me know in the comments below, what do you think? But we're gonna go to the next step. How about that? All right, now I'm gonna come in with my pale gold. 
and we're gonna start adding some interest. Alrighty, so first of all, let's kind of start laying it down. And I'm not gonna do full striations across, meaning I'm not gonna go in one big line. I'm just kind of putting them random down. Now they are in a striated pattern as far as which direction they're going, but it's not across the whole board. All right, okay, then we're gonna come in with our bondo spreader again, and we're gonna soften all that out. And now this time I'm kind of just going over the area that I just added, okay? I'm not, I'm not moving it a lot. I'm not messing with my original finish underneath. I'm just very lightly moving that color very softly. So guys, if you like these types of videos where I show so many different techniques, let me know, give me a thumbs up. And I would love for you guys to share this video. Help me get up in that ranking on YouTube. All right, so we've kind of got that. And do you see how we just kind of smeared it so it made it very soft? That's what I'm looking for. Now I'm gonna take my Bondo spreader and I'm gonna add a little bit of that tap and twist. I think that's gonna be my new name for my technique. We're gonna tap and twist because we're gonna take that Bondo spreader and just kind of twist it and move it. And that's what's given us this really pretty design and it's very organic. It's not like I'm just dragging a stick through it and making it straight. I'm tapping and twisting at the same time. Oh, I love that. Look at that vein right there. That is really pretty. All right, good. I like it, I like it, I like it a lot. All right, so I love this gold. Like I said at the beginning, this gold has a tendency to kind of sink down and make it look like it's just part of natural stone. All right, so I incorporated a few bubbles. So I'm gonna come back and just very lightly go over where the bubbles are. I don't want to add a lot of heat. A lot of heat is going to take my epoxy and make it very fluid like water. When that happens, I lose my design. So be very, very, very mindful of how much of the heat that you put on. All right, so now we're gonna take this to the next level by adding some gold that floats. This gold sunk, this gold is going to actually stay on the surface and give us those 3D veins, all right? So this is Rust-Oleum 2X Ultra Coverage Metallic Gold. This is so pretty. All right, so I'm gonna put some on my table. You don't wanna put this directly onto the surface. So shake it really well. I'm gonna put some on my table and then I'm gonna pick some up with my stick, load it up on the paint, and then very lightly, we're gonna just kinda drag it ever so lightly over the surface and just tap those veins. And you see how that gold is staying on top? that's where you get your depth. And I'm not gonna do it a lot. I'm just gonna, just ever so often, I'll bring it in. Don't overwork it, just kind of tap it on there. I think I'm just gonna put a couple of little pieces right here and right here. Kind of drag those out, bring them in. Now what's really cool about this is as you do that, if you just put a little bit, it's just gonna catch your eye when you look a certain way. It's gonna catch the light. Okay, I like that. Now, if you really want some bold gold on there, you can absolutely add more than I am. But I wanna keep it subtle and light. Now, you can also, you don't have to go just over the gold. You can come in here if you want to and just add a little bit on its own. I don't like that, actually. That's okay, because you know what I'm gonna do? I'm gonna meld it back in and it's okay. So see that? I'm glad I did this, guys, because I want you to know what this spray paint does. This spray paint dries really, really quickly on the surface. So if you go to try to move it, it's gonna get little chopped up pieces. It breaks, it actually, the paint dries. So when you try to move it, it'll start to break. So be very aware. I don't wanna go back now that it's been sitting on the surface for a while and try to manipulate it with my stick because what's gonna happen, it's gonna clump and it's not gonna look good. So once you put this on the surface, leave it alone. All right, I'm gonna come in now with isopropyl alcohol, 91%. I have my sprayer set a little bigger than super fine. So my drips are not gonna be super fine mist, but I'm also gonna just barely squeeze the trigger. All right, nice and high, the whole surface. 
Now, it's not gonna really mess with that gold that I put on top, because remember, that gold is drying really fast. Now, if you want the alcohol to cause some reaction with your gold on the, the, the top gold that floats, then as soon as you lay it down, you need to immediately hit it with alcohol because that will then cause that gold to kind of fracture. But I really wanted that gold to kind of stay like it was and everything else to kind of react with the alcohol. So by spritzing the alcohol, what I did is I caused all of that color that we melded to get little fractures almost, little cells, but it's very, very um, faint. That's the word I'm looking for. It's very faint. I absolutely love this. This, once again, can be a finish all on its own right here. But for your sake, I'm gonna take it to the next level and you guys can tell me yay or nay. Did you like it here or do you like what we're fixing to do? Let me know. So if you wanted a countertop that had a little more color, a little more um, contrast, we're gonna add some more of that gold. All right, so I still have some in the cup. At this point, it started to kind of get thick because it's been in the cup for probably 30 minutes maybe already. So it's already starting to get a little bit thick. So it's gonna react a little bit different than it did when I first mixed it and put it on a resin. So now we're gonna take this white predominantly finish and we're gonna start really kind of darkening it up. All right, so here we go. We're gonna, we're gonna have some light spots and we're gonna have some dark spots, how about that? All right, so I'm just gonna come in here and start laying down that color. Let's do that. And this is what you'll see in natural stone. You may have a whole slab that has spots of variations of color. All right, so here's my Bondo spreader. Now we're gonna come back and do the same thing. We're gonna very lightly go over the top. We're gonna cause that gold to kind of meld down. Now, you'll notice as we do this, remember, our surface is starting to really tack up. So it's gonna react a lot differently than it did when we first put it on. So we get a whole different look. All right, ooh wee, I like it, I like it, I like it, I like it. Now let's do the dip and drag or the tap and drag. All right, so I wanna make sure we get this new lingo down. So we're gonna officially call this the tap and twist. How about that? I'm gonna have to put that on a t-shirt. Same thing over here. We're tapping and we're twisting. Now watch what I do here. This is really fun. I'm gonna tap it, but as because the epoxy's starting to set up, when I lift it up, see those little strings right there? As I do this, I'm gonna actually move it over. Now you see how it causes these little tiny micro fractures? Micro, I guess they would be almost like a little micro vein. I'm gonna have to come up with a name. You guys let me know in the comments below, what, what would you call this? But as I drag that epoxy, I mean drag the product it really causes a neat design. Now again, be mindful of how much you chop. You don't want to turn it into mud. The tapping always causes a little bit of air bubbles. So very lightly, I'm going to get rid of those air bubbles. Okay, y'all. I, mm, I really like that. Now, I'm going to come back in with my gold that floats and I'm just gonna add a few little areas just kind of because I want to how about that just a little bit on the top just enough to kind of catch my eye just a little bit now I do want that gold to react so I'm gonna lay it down and then I'm gonna immediately hit it with alcohol now you can see that it'll cause some reaction all right let's do the same thing over here Pick me up some of that gold, and we're gonna drag it in here. Oh, we out. Yep, that's a winner, winner, chicken dinner there. Got it. All right, I'm gonna respritz the whole thing. I'm not putting a lot of alcohol. It looks like I am, but I'm really not. I'm just barely squeezing the trigger. Okay, I have a little white left. This is the opaque white. I'm actually going to run a few little veins through here. Very light, just a few. Now this is our titanium white. Remember, our titanium white sinks, has a tendency to sink, and really kind of gives us some cool looks. And because it's been sitting in the 
cup quite a while, I'm able to drag it and it's very, very thin. Very, very, very thin. That titanium white's gonna sink. My veins are gonna become very, very faint. Almost like cracked. So I'm gonna heat it up just a bit. Okay, you know what? I like that even more than I thought I was gonna like it. So I'm gonna add some more. Beautiful, I'm gonna come in maybe with a little bit different angle. There we go. Yes, I like that. Okay, heat it up again. Now, if you have the ability to tilt your piece, do it. If not, don't worry about it. It's still gonna move on its own, but if you can tilt it a little bit, it really does give a really cool effect. All right, so I'm gonna heat it up. I'm gonna tilt it just a little bit. Heating it as you tilt it will cause it to move just a bit. Now, if you can't tilt your piece, if it's either too big or you're doing an on-site pour onto a substrate that's already there, you can take a hairdryer or your heat gun set on low and ever so lightly, you don't wanna move it fast at all. You can very lightly come over the top and kind of get those white veins to kind of scoot and kind of move a little bit. And that's the look I was going for because it just try to, it, it just takes that titanium and it sinks it to the bottom. I'm done. Literally, I'm gonna walk away because I could play with this all day. I This is absolutely a stunning piece. I think if I had to really critique myself, I believe I would not on this final layer, I believe I probably wouldn't have put the gold just because as I step back, my eye is caught by the gold a little bit too much. But let me know in the comments what you would do. But this is beautiful. I actually like this step better because we put that darker in and kind of have a mixture now of light and dark. If this were on a big island or a whole countertop kitchen, this would look so incredibly real. So what I would do, let this sit for 24 hours if this were a countertop, I would then come back with a clear flood coat, let that sit for 24 hours, and then I would actually do this in UTC Ultimate Top Coat in matte. This finish with the UTC matte would make it straight up look like a piece of stone. So realistic, I love it. I want you to challenge me. I want you to list in the comments four colors that you want me to do a finish. I'll choose a winner and I'm gonna do that finish for you. So don't set me up for failure, guys. Don't give me some crazy colors. Give me some colors that you think will work and I promise I'll do it for you. All right, guys, that's it for this week. I hope you liked this video. I loved it. Let me know by giving me a thumbs up, subscribing to our channel and share this video, guys. We are gonna grow to 100,000 this summer. It is on my list to do. Anyway, until next week, remember, don't be scared. Move forward and be creative.